Hey everybody and welcome back to More Than Just a Dog. My name is Kayla and I recently got a puppy. His name is Forrest and this past week he went on his very first trip to PetSmart and a lot of cuteness unfolded. So check it out. Really quick, before I show you some of that footage from Forrest's first PetSmart adventure, I wanna talk about puppy socialization. And my opinions about socialization probably stem from the fact that I used to train service dogs. And when you train service dogs, when you become something called a puppy raiser, what happens is an organization will give you a puppy and it's your responsibility to take care of that puppy for about a year. But not just take care of them and teach them things like sit and down, you're also teaching them really sophisticated behaviors like how to turn on lights and how to push buttons on an elevator and you're also helping them learn how to encounter life in general. A lot of times how that happens is they're just following you in your day-to-day -day life. So my service dogs went to school with me because one of them I raised when I was in high school, the other I raised when I was in college. They went to church with me, they went to movie theaters with me, they went to sporting events with me. Your service dog puppies go everywhere with you just like a real graduated service dog does too. So that someday when they graduate from you and they go on to become a partner for someone, they already understand how to encounter certain things. Like I said, a lot of that happens just by experiencing life with you as their trainer. But there are some things that as a trainer, you have to specifically seek out opportunities to help the dog encounter or learn. And the best example I have of this is public transportation because at the time that I was training service dogs, I really didn't live somewhere that had buses and trains and things like that. So I had to specifically seek out buses so that the service dogs learned how to ride on buses or learned how to ride on trams. I even at one point went and found a ferry so that the dogs could just ride on a ferry boat and figure out what that looks like, what it sounds like, and probably what it smells like too. Now I still take that mindset and apply it to my own dogs at home. So when Maya was a little kid, when she was an itty bitty puppy, she went to a lot of different places so that she could see and hear and smell a lot of different things. Now it's Forrest's turn. So I call these intentional adventures. It's when you're taking your dog out somewhere intentionally to give them a positive outcome and a positive experience with somewhere new that you probably won't encounter every single day, but if you want your dog to be able to go with you to restaurants or cafes someday, or if you want them to be able to uh, go to a flea market with you at some point, then you do have to expose them to things outside of your normal home when they're young so that when they're adults, they understand how to encounter those aspects of life. So I chose PetSmart as Forrest's first intentional adventure because it happened to be his 16 week old birthday. So he obviously needed a couple toys. Okay, so Forrest is safely in his kennel in the back seat and we are outside of PetSmart right now. We're getting ready to go in. But before I do, I want to tell you guys what my goals are for this intentional adventure. So I have goals for myself, not goals for him, but goals for myself. And the first goal is I'm not going to ask him to do any behavior at all inside of PetSmart. So he's been learning sit and he's been learning down. He's been learning his recall. He's been learning how to find heel position. And there will come a day where I expect him to be able to do those behaviors in a place like PetSmart or really anywhere. But at the moment, he's not ready for that. And so this adventure day is not about him doing something for me. It's about him seeing things he's never seen and hearing things he's maybe never heard and smelling things he's definitely never smelled and having a good and positive experience with it. So that's what I'm focused on today. That means that he has absolutely no responsibility other than just being himself and being a puppy inside of PetSmart. And so the responsibility is on me to remind myself not to ask him to do anything. And there's a specific reason for that that I'll get to in a second. But in the meantime, goal number two is I'm also going to be an advocate for him if he needs me to be. There's likely going to be people in there who wanna pet him. There might be dogs in there that could intimidate him. And so I'm gonna tell those people if he's showing me any kind of shyness or uncomfortability, like, hey, please stop uh, where you are. You know, he's in training, he's just a puppy. Um, if they ask to pet him and I think that he's not ready for that for some reason, then I will say like, please don't pet him. But if he is showing me that he's ready for that, then that's okay. Then he, we might give him the opportunity to meet someone new or see a new thing. Um, but that's because I want to make sure that he knows that he's always safe with me. That's a precedent, which again, we'll come to in just a second. Goal number three for myself is when he does react appropriately to something, if he does do something that I like, even though I'm not going to ask him to do anything I like, I want to reward that behavior. So if he does something awesome, I'm gonna give him something awesome. So I have treats in my pocket and I'm ready for that. 
The reason that I have those three specific goals, goal number one, don't ask anything of him, goal number two, be his advocate, and goal number three, have treats and give him treats when he does something great, is because these goals actually set a precedent for him in the future. Because there's going to be lots of adventures for him in the future as a family pet, but also as a competition dog too. And I want him to know that these three goals are going to turn into precedents. The goal number one of not asking him to do anything today really translates in the future to, I will never ask him to do anything he is not capable of doing. I'm not going to put him in a position where he is going to fail. So that's a precedent that I'm setting today. The second goal, he is always safe with me, right? The goal is I'm going to advocate for him if he needs me to. But the precedent that that sets is that he's always safe with me. I'm not going to let anything bad happen to him. I'm not going to let some stranger um, get too close to him too fast. I'm not going to let some big dog get in his space. I'm going to be his advocate and I'm setting that precedent today. And goal number three, which is I have treats that I'm going to feed him when he does something great or something I like or want to see again in the future, that sets another precedent. And what it says to him is that the human has treats. <laughs> Whenever we're somewhere new, the human has treats. So if I do something good, I might get something good or something that I like. So without further ado, we're going to go into PetSmart. I'm going to keep all those goals in mind and I'm going to make sure that he has a positive outcome at the end. Forrest's first trip to PetSmart went really, really well. There was a lot of positivity, definitely a good outcome. He was only shy one time, and that was when a family of three was walking down one of the aisles toward him, and they were really respectful. They weren't rushing him or anything like that, but he was super alert and attentive, and his ears were up, and then as they got closer, the kiddo reached out their hand, um, almost like they were going to try to pet him, and that was when Forrest was like, nah, not really sure that I'm appreciative of that. So I just was like, oh, sorry, like we're gonna move on. You know, he's a little shy right now. And he recovered really well. Like your dog is allowed to be uncertain about things, especially if they're encountering something like that for the first time. But the key is he recovered well. So he got reinforcement for recovering and then we moved on. He also got reinforcement every single time he looked up at me and gave me attention. And again, I wasn't asking for it. I was just waiting for him to do it. When he voluntarily checked in and I reinforced it, what that did was it created this foundation for, hey, when we're out in this new environment, I've got treats on me. If you're looking at me, you're doing something correct. Correct. And hopefully that sets this foundation and expectation moving forward as he becomes a competition dog. This video is totally unlike any of the other videos that we currently have on our channel. So if you liked it, do me a favor and just give me a thumbs up. That way I know. If you have any questions about intentional adventures or anything you saw today regarding forest behavior, leave me a comment below and I'm happy to try to answer those questions for you. And if you wanna see some of our 
other content. We've got lots of corgis on this channel, but also some competition work, some toy reviews. If you want to see that kind of stuff, all you have to do is hit subscribe and ring the bell. That way you get alerted every single time we post a new video. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining us for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and you pass it on. See ya!